Hi, this is Mark from Pocket Gamer, and I wanted to give you a quick first look at The Drowning, a new iPad first-person shooter from Scattered Entertainment. It's apparently going to revolutionise first-person shooters on touch devices, so we'll have a look at that. But we'll also look at the game's free-to-play mechanics, the wait timers, the in-app purchases, and the paywalls, things like that. So, let's get to it. We'll start here in the inventory screen. This shows us all the guns that we have access to, both the guns that are ready to go, like the shotgun and the crossbow, as well as guns that need repairing before we can use them, like the AK-47 and the M4. Much of this game is about finding scrap to repair broken weapons and vehicles to progress through the game. So let's look at the M4. It needs a firing pin and a flash suppressor. Annoyingly, the flash suppressor is on a different island, so we need to repair our motorboat if we're going to want to get there. Let's have a look at the AK-47. Yeah, same story, the auto fire control kit on the other island. So let's repair our motorboat. For this one, we're going to need to find a bilge pump and an outboard motor. Luckily, the bilge pump is nearby. It's in the village. It's only going to cost us three gas units to get there. Uh, so let's let's go. Let's fill up. Uh, let's use one of our gas cans and then go. Okay, so I'll just start taking out some enemies and I'll explain the controls as I go. The basic idea is you tap the screen with two fingers and the bullet flies towards whatever point is directly between those two taps. It works pretty well and allows you to make accurate shots quickly and in quick succession. There are some times when the target is directly on an enemy but they don't seem to be responding to being shot but that's often more the case that the gun you're using is inaccurate and needs to be upgraded or replaced. To move you just tap wherever you want to go and your dude sort of navigates there automatically and wanders around enemies and obstacles with automatic pathfinding. And finally you've got that button down the bottom of the screen that lets you spin around 180 degrees allowing you to get the drop on enemies. So, are these controls revolutionary? Well, they're a lot better than the ham-fisted virtual thumbsticks you might find in a game like Modern Combat or Dead Trigger. You're obviously not going to be as fast or as reliable or as accurate as if you've got a controller or a mouse and keyboard, but this is the closest we've come to good FPS controls on a you know, touch sensitive piece of glass. So, definitely interesting. Let's, uh, let's keep watching and I'll be back soon. Okay, the level is nearly over and it's time to scavenge for scrap. The whole idea of the drowning is the more enemies you kill, the more pieces of scrap you'll find. So I found some glue, a tire, a hose, another tire, and some thread. Okay, not very useful. I could find more if I wanted to pay for some flares, but I don't. Didn't get the bilge pump I needed, so I guess I'm just going to have to play some more, oh dear. In the meantime, let's upgrade a weapon, let's upgrade this shotgun. Basically you just throw useless items, spare parts not needed for crafting, at the gun, things like springs and glue and chains, and it becomes more powerful, better at meleeing enemies, more powerful in shooting and lighter to carry. Okay, a slightly different environment now, we're inside a warehouse. I'm looking for a firing pin for my SPAS shotgun. I've brought along a different weapon this time, I've brought along the hunting rifle, so you can see how that works. It uses a pretty familiar uh, touch 
control, which is the pinch to zoom. So much in the same way as you zoom in on a, a website, you just pinch, zoom in, and now you are uh, looking down the scope of your rifle. It becomes a little bit disorientating as you're sort of moving around while zoomed in. Um, but you know, it's pretty natural. There are two types of missions you can play in The Drowning, as far as I've played at least. There's attack, where you try to kill as many of these monsters in a couple of minutes. And then there's defend, where you have to kill a load of monsters, but now they're breaking through your ramshackle wooden defences. Like Dead Trigger, it can become pretty repetitive. In fact, it doesn't take long for The Drowning to become a bit of a slog. There are some new enemies, sure. Uh, and you eventually get to use new weapons, but it is the same thing over and over again. It becomes quite a grind. Okay, at the end of this mission, I got all the pieces I needed to upgrade my SPAS-12 shotgun. So if we tap on that, we can see I've got all the parts, the broken bit, the spring, the bullets, the firing pin, all that sort of stuff. So let's hit craft. Ah, we're hit with a 20 minute wait timer. I can of course rush the delivery, uh, you know, expedite that process. I need 100 gold. Let's uh, find out how much that would cost. Come on, 69p, so, you know, not bad, I guess, but if you're gonna do that on every gun you get, that's going to add up. We've also hit uh, another paywall. As you can see, uh, I've run out of gas. So if I try and go to a new area, uh, it's gonna tell me I can't go there unless I pay up. That gas does come back, but it's super slow and the wait timer isn't even visible. So I think we'll just leave it for now. So that's The Drowning, a clever new control system, sure, revolutionary maybe, uh, but a kind of a boring and repetitive game that's filled with wait timers and paywalls and in-app purchases. Maybe someone can borrow this uh, control system and put it in a more interesting game, hopefully. <laughs>